been up here a few times talking about scuba diving. I don't want to start there. I remember a couple months ago, I was having a real hard time talking. I, I had something to say, and all that was coming out was, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, it, and it was really frustrating. I was trying so hard to say something. I don't remember what it was. It was really important I said something. And I, I tried even harder. And then all of a sudden, ah, and I woke up. <laughs> I said, oh, I was asleep. And my jaw wasn't moving. My tongue wasn't moving. All that was happening was my vocal cords were vibrating. And I'm like, oh, it's just like when I'm underwater with my friends scuba diving and we talk to each other. You're like, how can you talk to each other underwater? You can. There's a skill to it. Bubbles. Bubbles are really noisy. You've all heard bubbles underwater, like in a fish tank or in a pool. The bubbles are really loud. You can hear them far away, right? Okay. So <clears throat> that all that noise of the bubbles counteracts your vocal cords vibrating and sending sound. So the trick here, this is my secret, don't tell anyone, all right, is that when you talk underwater, you gotta make sure that breath isn't coming out of your mouth. And then if you're talking on scuba, you got a, a mouthpiece in your mouth and your tongue can't hit the, the front of your, the top of your teeth or the top of your mouth. So I can't say Tom. My name's Om um, Underwater. <laughs> <laughs> so you can say simple things like yes or no, it's just O. Oh. <laughs> you can say names like, like Greg because your tongue hits the back top of your mouth, right? Okay, so I teach scuba lessons on the weekends. This weekend I'll be teaching and I'll, you know, I'll be that. Hey, that's our instructor. They're really experienced at scuba diving. They teach us a lot. They know all this stuff, right? Yeah. Well, when I'm underwater, I'll I'll talk to the students. And I know that I'm speaking fairly clearly and they should be able to understand me. But they don't. And when we come back up to the surface, they're like, what were you saying? Do you know why they can't hear me? Anybody? All their bubbles, they're breathing so hard, they got all these bubbles going up by their ears and they can't understand a thing I'm saying, even though I'm really good at this. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about this. I, I go diving with my friend Corey in Florida and we regularly talk to each other because he, he just started doing these four hour dives with me. I really like it. It's great. He's got four tanks strapped on and all this open circuit gear, but he's mastered the the, when he's talking, the breath isn't coming out of his mouth, so I can hear him, and he can hear me. Most of the time, we don't really understand each other, maybe 50% of the time, but that's the mumbling part, is can't really enunciate very well underwater. So, like, you know, we use sign language to some level in scuba diving, but it's really super basic. It's like, okay, let's end the dive. Let's go that way. You're crazy. You know, <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know what you're doing. Uh, things like that. And I said, man, deaf people have a huge advantage in scuba diving because they know ASL, right? And they can communicate with their hands and tell everything. They can be very descriptive, have whole conversations. So I signed up for an ASL class that I've been taking at the Colorado School for the Deaf and Blind. Nice. And I just finished the last class last night. And I'm like, I actually was able to tell the teacher that I'm not coming next week for the last class because I'm going to Florida for work. I'm like, oh, wow, this is really cool. So I'm gonna try and use all of that communication in my scuba classes on the weekends and actually use real American Sign Language when I'm teaching. We'll see how that goes, because now I've got to teach some people you know, specific signs. But why not? So I started looking up online last night. Hey, 
there's got to be people who teach scuba diving that are deaf. And I found a guy down in Florida in Clearwater who has a whole business set up, and he is a deaf scuba course director. He teaches other instructors, and all in sign language. I'm like, man, that's super cool. That would be a great place to learn scuba diving because that hand communication is really important. Now, I mean, I already told you how skilled I am at mumbling and going, er, er, go, er, er, right? <laughs> <laughs> but maybe the sign language has some advantages over my super awesome verbal communication. So I challenge you to try to learn some American Sign Language because when we go scuba diving together, you're probably want to get, going to want to use those signs rather than talking to me underwater because it's going to take you a while to build up the speaking skills underwater. Thank you. <laughs>